This is Professor Hildebrandt with an example from Chapter 8 on labor productivity. So in this chapter, we talk about a lot of different types of productivity, um, but productivity is simply some measure of output divided by a measure of an input. Okay, And we can actually look at a lot of different kinds of productivity in terms of our resources. Um, we could look at how productive our capital is, um, how productive our natural resources are, but most firms really focus on labor productivity. Two main reasons for this. One, labor productivity for a firm is typically their most expensive input resource, okay? And the second reason is labor productivity is typically very easy to measure. Now, when it comes to these two um, units, we can look at a lot of different things. So for output, we can focus on GDP, so that total value of everything that was produced. We could use our sales and revenue as the measure of output, or we could measure the number of units produced, the number of bottles of wine, the number of tennis shoes, okay? And then focusing specifically on our labor output, we could look at the total number of workers that produce the output. We could look at the number of hours worked, the number of days worked, weeks worked. You get down to the minute if you wanted to, okay? So we're gonna have a country, country A, and country A has 200 people in half of those work. So we have 100 workers, and they're producing output valued at $5,000. So that's their real GDP, okay? And so we are going to calculate the labor productivity, and I'm gonna say the original one, so what we're starting at, okay, for country A. So I'm gonna take this real GDP of $5,000, and I'm gonna divide by this our number of workers, 100. And so I would find that my current labor productivity is $50 for every worker. So we say $50 per worker, okay? That's currently um, our labor productivity. But then we're gonna have a change. Over here we have country B. And country B has 25 refugees that are allowed to move to country A. They're all hard workers, so they're all allowed to work. Because of them coming and working in country A, the GDP in country A is going to increase by $500. So now we want to see what is uh, labor productivity now. Did it increase or decrease? And by how much was the change? So we're going to calculate our new labor productivity. So remember from the previous slide, originally we had GDP of 5,000. We are adding to that another 500. We had 100 workers, and we're adding to this 25 new workers. So now we have $5,500 divided by 125 workers. And so if you do the math here, we would get that our new labor productivity is $44 per worker. So again, if we go back one, originally our labor productivity was $50 per worker. It is now only $44 Per worker. So what does this mean? This means that in this example, even though total GDP went up, labor productivity okay, actually decreases. This was because those 25 new refugee workers that came in, they were not as productive as our um, original workers. The question might also ask how much was the change and the change here was there was a decrease by $6 per worker. So that's, again, that's just a quick little example to show you more about labor productivity.